Hola, buenos días, es Nico. So today, um, first I just got back from the dentist because I was getting a feeling. So bitch, half my face is numb. So if I look a little funky or if I sound a little funny in this video is because <laughs> I'm trying to talk through like a numb face. Um, today I'm going to be talking about something very serious. But first, as you all may know, I got S worded on Twitter. I got S worded on Twitter. I'll do a video about that. I'll do a video about that because there was a specific interaction with the artist that got me S-worded and they were so smug and I told that bitch by herself and I said, girl, don't fucking play with me. So it, it was a very smug and condescending scenario. So we we now see eye to eye and they're trying to retract their statements. If <laughs> if you want to continue following me on Twitter, I made a new account. Um, I'm already at like 3K. Somebody, One of my mutuals was like, I know Nico did not wake up to 3,000 new followers. And I'm like, bitch, I know how to bring the girls in. You know, I, I know how to bring the gays in. All you gotta do is drop a little thirst trap and the people that know me are just gonna follow me back because I'm the homie, that kind of thing. <laughs> but today we're actually gonna be talking about something in very important because it was some foolishness, bitch. It was some foolishness. And the thing is, I normally... I stay out of trans people's business because that's that's uh, that's the thing. A lot of people don't know when to stay in a place. Bitch, stay out of people's business. Like people say, stay out of black folks' business, stay out of black women's business, stay out of trans women's business. That's how I keep it. If it don't if it don't pertain to me, I don't speak on it because like, girl, it's not my story to tell nor my fight to you know fight against if I disagree with something. That's not my business, so I just stay out of it. But this situation. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nico's about to be nosy. Nico's about to put his big ass foot. Actually, I have little feet. Nico's about to put his little feet into this conversation. But first, um, if you like thirst traps, follow me on Instagram. If you want to help me pay my light bills, because light electricity got skyrocketed. For some reason, Texas is <laughs> Texas is increasing the price of electricity, even though we just went through a, like, a major ice storm and lost power for multiple days. So I don't know where all this this billing is coming from. So yeah, if you want to help me pay that, follow me on Patreon where I post um, exclusive videos. I'm sorry that I missed out the rest of last week, but to be fair, I had no water, I had no electricity. I, I was just, I wasn't about. I mean, I lost electricity for a few hours, so I'm not gonna say that it was like super bad. Occasionally, it would go off. Um, water, we had to cut it off. Um, what was it? My sister and her family, they had to come over here because their power was completely out. So it's like I had six people in my house. I had three dogs in my house, one of them big as hell. And I'm like, I can't record with all this background noise because I'm one of those people that's like, if it's not completely silent in my video, I cannot stand it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Point is, if you want to help me pay this electricity bill, bitch, follow me on Patreon where I post exclusive videos. I post, um you know, different topics. We have our weekly lives, you know, that kind of thing. Um, get your money's worth. Uh, <laughs> um, other than that, follow me on Instagram for some thirst traps. Follow me on Twitter for some humor and thirst traps because you know I keep it juicy, juicy. That kind of thing. But um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's enough. Twitch, 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 Twitch. I'm getting the laptop this weekend. My flight got laid over because of the storm. I'm getting the laptop this weekend. And by the end of, no, I can't even promise by the end of the month. By the beginning of next month, it should be ready because I'm gonna have to get it repaired and refurbished because it. he's selling it to me for like $300 because the charging port is broken and then the keyboard is messed up. So I'm getting like a $1,600 laptop for $300. I'm gonna get it and then I'm gonna get it refurbished. So point is, it's gonna be ready. <laughs> Um, other than that, I think we're ready for this conversation. Finding Psy. Finding Psy. Because the thing is, I didn't, I mean, I've seen Psy. So, Psy is a transgender woman who identifies as they, them. So, I'm going to refer to them as they. They or them, depending on. So, when I say they or them, know that I'm referring to Psy to respect pronouns. Because one thing we're not going to do in this conversation is misgender and or mispronounce someone's pronouns because my best friend is trans and I genuinely respect the trans community. So we're gonna continue to keep utmost respect in our conversations, especially around this topic. So, <laughs> one of my mutuals 
hit me up and was like, hey, can you retweet this? Because this is some serious shit. Because as you know, black trans women in, well, across the world are being killed, unfortunately. So it, it, it's becoming a more prevalent scenario. So when this broke, Sai is basically, I'm gonna insert the clip after this. Sai is basically crying saying, hey, I'm in Ohio, um, Cincinnati, I believe. I believe it was Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I'm in a basement. There's a five, six, five, seven Latino male who's 50 years old, 40 to 50. Um, someone please say help. Quick conversation update. Um, while I was editing, I remember to bring up the fact because I forgot while recording. Sai said a 5'6", five, 5'7", five, Latino male who is in their 40s to 50s, but at the same time, they specifically targeted the Latino community when doing this, putting lots of Latino men in danger because people don't realize Latino men, just like black men, are in danger with the police. So they had them on a wild goose chase, chasing after this fictitious man, putting all of these people in danger. And I think that's something that we should also talk about. Why would you blatantly blame the Latino community when in history, white men usually get away with these kind of things regarding black trans women and or black trans sex workers their murders so it would be more plausible to blame a white person so i want to bring into the conversation why would Sai choose to blame a latino male in this scenario and it was all very stressed and like terrifying tall 40 to 50 years old latino male about 5 10 please i'm in cincinnati ohio i'm in the basement you could be back any second please help so their friends understandably started a worldwide panic about finding Psy, adding Psy, hashtag find Psy. So even I retweeted this kind of information because I'm like, this is terrifying because this shit does happen. You know, what if this person is in grave danger? So we're all desperately trying to find Psy. People are calling the Cincinnati Police Department, trying to get them to find Psy, tap their location, you know, that kind of thing, trying to see where this video came from so that they could possibly like redirect it and go find them. So they're calling the police department round the clock to the point that the police are not answering the phone up. Is this about that Twitter situation? And you know what? That's, that's understandable because sometimes the police don't understand the gravity of a situation and they don't get there in time because a lot of situations, a lot of scenarios, people say, yeah, I called because my friend was getting a beaten up or harassed or stalked and the police showed up like two hours late before they could do it. Like, they couldn't do anything it was already done so i understand like the round the clock calling reminding them and trying to find where this person is at that's that's going through and that's good that they were on top of trying to find side so it began to make the police department actively begin to search a lot quicker than normal so we're getting to the point that now we're starting to see size go fund me pop up and if you don't know this i'm going to insert it here Sai has had multiple GoFundMes, all reaching their goals or getting close to it. So when this GoFundMe popped up, they were at, I'd say 40K-ish. Their goal was, um, no, they were at like 20 to 30K. Their goal is 60 or 80, I forget. Um, so when this happened, the GoFundMe started cycling as well. And that's when people started to question shit. Because <laughs> even I, you know, I was one of those people, but like I said at the beginning of this video, stay out of trans people's business. I ain't gonna get involved because if, as soon as you say something that disagrees with certain people, you're instantly labeled as transphobic. So when this situation, people were rightfully asking, if we're desperately searching for Psy, why the fuck is their GoFundMe going? Like, <laughs> I don't understand why their GoFundMe is getting retweeted because as you can see in this post, they were saying, boost this GoFundMe, boost size GoFundMe, tag, hashtag, find Psy. And I'm just like, internally, I'm thinking if this person is missing and or in danger and possibly could be murdered, you know, or trafficked, what is a GoFundMe going to do? They can't access this. I'm not understanding why the GoFundMe is getting circulated. So once the GoFundMe started becoming the main focal point, people started going, girl, what the fuck is happening here? So they're starting to actively dig deeper into this. And the more you look into it, Sai had been saying for the last couple of days, y'all can't hold me accountable for shit because I'm mentally ill. Um, I don't care about gender, uh, gender acceptance. I don't care about being a part of the LGBT community or fighting for you rainbow people. They were like, I'm about getting my jaw busted open and shaved down, my vaginoplasty and stuff like that. Basically saying, I don't care about the community. I'm here for me. 
and they started saying, I'm gonna start posting my GoFundMe everywhere and be really obnoxious because y'all not understanding I need this money. So those tweets alone are one thing, but combined with the fact that the GoFundMe is now becoming the main focal point while people are still tweeting, hashtag find sign to find sign, people started giving it a side eye and you were instantly labeled transphobic if you didn't immediately believe this. So my thing about victimship, I automatically believe said victims and then I allow further information to come through to see if it's valid or if it's a scam. Because in this scenario, it's beginning to look like a scam because the police actually did their job. You know, the police actually did their due diligence and guess what they found out? Cy was not in Ohio, Cincinnati. Cy was in Columbus, two hours away from Ohio, Cincinnati when they pinged their video. Because notice, once Cy put up that video, their Instagram got taken down. As in, Cy immediately removed all pictures, all information, and that single video was up. Eventually, even that video got taken down. Because the thing is, one of their friends on Twitter is very viral. They're very popular, they're very well known. So all these viral trans accounts, all these viral LGBT people, including me, because you know, I used to have 28K followers before I got deleted. <laughs> We're all retweeting, find Psy, like where is Psy? Like this is a serious scenario. So now that this is blown out of proportion, all of a sudden all this information is getting deleted. So once it started looking funny, people are like, okay, well, they're probably in big danger if their Instagram is now deleted. They're trying to erase all traces before they could track side down so it can it, it continues to build up it continues to build up and the gofundme is steadily increasing steadily increasing steadily increasing and it's getting to a worldwide phenomenon level then Sai got back on live and was like hey guys things were taken out of proportion but i was in a dangerous scenario but i'm okay now hey um so everything got blown out of proportion i'm fine um, please, um, thank you so much for the messages and the support, but everything's good. Thank you. And people are still questioning, like, girl, you, you was just screaming and crying and hooping and hollering and are you really okay? Is this, a, is this the kidnapper making you get on camera? And people are questioning the video. And I'm one of those people that if you put out a video that looks like you are safe, if you, cause you can usually tell when something is off. This video wasn't off. Sai was just not putting their face in it. And Sai was just being nonchalant about it. So it's like, you went from a complete 180 from terror to eh, it wasn't even that bad. So now people are really questioning. <laughs> so now people are really asking, girl, what the fuck is going on? Because now it's looking, it's looking really sus. Sai's friends finally get in contact with them after the whole, okay, well, I'm all right video. And they FaceTime Psy and they're sitting in a closet. They're sitting in a closet talking to people like, that's not a closet, you don't understand. They're probably locked up and not able to get out and this is a hostage situation, but you can see the, the closet railing against the ceiling. So it, it's visible that Psy is now sitting in a closet. They're sitting in a closet on FaceTime with their friends and they're like, oh, they're okay, they're fine. It was just a risky scenario. And it continues to build up to the GoFundMe almost hits its goal of 80K. At that point, bitch, at that point, Sai's roommate came out and said, y'all, it was all a lie. She lied. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was all a lie. <laughs> You know that video? But yeah, so it's like, Sai's roommate came out and said, no, this is a lie. Sai sat up here. Sai sat up here and said, okay, well, I need this money and it's gonna be real easy, girl. You know, you should do it too. We two black trans women, we could just scam and get this money. And the friend is actively going, no, that's not right. And as a black trans woman, I wouldn't feel right doing that kind of thing because we all sat back after this was done and said, you realize that this is going to make any trans person actively seeking help a lot harder because they're gonna question their validity because of this. I understand it's not right, but it's the same as with the black community. When, when one big name black person does something bad, it looks bad on all of us. Unfortunately, because you know, if you are a minority or you are in a minority group, you are lumped in together with everybody. So it's gonna make a lot of trans women, especially black trans women seeking help. After that, more information started to come out and they started doing voice recordings and they were saying, yeah, Sai is lying. You know, I, I have the video of the voice recording and it's going into detail on how they're lying and that their family uh, was tricked as well because the family knew they were a scammer, but they didn't know that they were gonna go this far. The thing that was posted and shared mm -hmm. about 
her being abducted or like her being in Cincinnati was fake. Okay. How how, um, how is it fake? I know this, and I know this because one, the girl that she was with called me and told me that so I went into her closet in Columbus and recorded that, posted it, knowing and with the intentions of her GoFundMe getting shared. She was then told the girl that she should do the same because, and I have screenshots too, okay. she told the girl to then do the same um, because because it's easy money. Um, and the girl's telling her, no, you shouldn't. The only reason why Sai got on to say that she is okay is because that girl told her to. Um, the girl's telling me that she feels used by Sai and so I'm gonna call her Sasha. She says that she feels used by Sasha because after that argument, um, she said that she was gonna pack her bags and head out. Because who's the argument a, about making a post or not? About Twitter? Yeah, about because the only thing was that her friend is telling her to po- to say like that you know like why is she doing that? That's not okay in the first place, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that screenshot that I sent you, the thing that I told you that she said like. She said that that's that's just like going too far. Because Sai not only scammed the world, but they scammed their family, their closest friends, and made everyone believe that they were in danger and or possibly dead for money. For money. Okay? Follow with me. So, the thing is, Sai didn't even apologize. Sai did a whole roundabout. I was definitely in danger, but it was a it was a difficult thing and you know, I don't really have to talk about it and I don't have to explain myself to nobody and you know, it was just a very stressful situation and it's over. I did something that, you know, might be unforgivable to some people, you know? Some people might not ever see why, you know, I might have done something, but I did lead people to believe that I was in immediate danger. And this was not something that was a level-headed, clear-headed decision. You know, it came from a place of me being, me going through it. Um, What I posted was um, basically a three-second clip um, crying for help. I was giving just a CC um, of, you know, indicating that you know, something had happened to me or I was in danger. You know, I tried to take it back as soon as I could. I tried to backtrack it. You know, I tried to um, delete it. I tried to, you know, but it kept getting deeper and deeper as, you know, I am So let me just say, 90% of what you're reading online is not true. This video that I posted was definitely taken and run with. Um, I kind of, in that sense, took advantage of, you know, that sense of over-familiarity that people tend to have with influencers or um, Black women in general. I kind of took that and I ran with it. It was definitely a cry for attention. It was desperate. It was wrong, might I add. It was disgusting and I immediately regretted it because I deleted it 10 minutes later. And I knew it was wrong. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and I don't, I'm not gonna come to you crying and, you know, I'm not gonna come to you crying or asking for forgiveness because I don't need your forgiveness. I don't need anyone's forgiveness. I just need to clear my name and say my part. I could have called it off then and there, which I tried to do, but it didn't really come off genuine and this is a very serious situation. Again, it wasn't a lie because as a black trans woman, I've been in these situations. So after the whole confession from their roommate came out, they deleted all that shit, bitch. They deleted the Twitter, they deleted the Instagram, they deleted all of the the explain the, the explanatory comments because people also questioned it when they said, "Sign, you realize that you said that you were okay in that one life, but people are now questioning you because they're trying to get in contact with you saying, 
go, what the fuck is happening? And you're refusing to give information out. That's another thing that fell through with Sai's story. They refused to tell anybody what actually happened. And people were saying, y'all don't deserve an answer. And even though y'all donated to the GoFundMe, you know, it's transphobic to ask questions like that. They don't have to explain their trauma to you. And normally I'm like, okay, if you went through a traumatic event, you know, you really don't have to explain yourself. That's a that's something that could trigger your, you know, trauma. So, but the thing is with Sai, they came on live and said that they were perfectly fine. They said that they were fine and that it was just a stressful time. Girl, if you had enough energy to go online and say that you were perfectly fine and then take all this fucking 86K money, bitch, you had enough energy to tell the people that donated $86,000 to you, girl, this is what happened. Because at this point, they've not only invested their time and energy in having mass panic attacks, because people were having panic attacks that this public figure was possibly dead. They're having panic attacks and donated $86,000 and they don't deserve a, girl, what happened? It's bullshit. <laughs> girl, it's bullshit. And as soon as it came out that side was lying, that GoFundMe money started going boop, 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 boop. It started going down because my thing is, y'all don't realize GoFundMe doesn't play. People that have made fake GoFundMe accounts and fake reasons for a GoFundMe prior have gone to prison because that is stealing. Zai has committed a worldwide scam. They have robbed thousands of people out of thousands of dollars. Because my thing is, I understand you want to GoFundMe. I understand that you need to get your stuff done. You know, you need to get the proper surgeries that you aspire for. I understand that. And I understand that you also need to worry about your safety because some of this money went to safety and housing because trans people are denied jobs at times. So I completely understood that. But going to the degree of lying to thousands of people about you possibly being kidnapped and murdered, which happens to trans women, is fucked up to emotionally manipulate them out of money during a pandemic, during a global pandemic. It's fucked up. And then I saw all the art girls, you know, the, the big gays that have, you know, we in New York, we doing Academy, bitch. You know, we on that bundle, that cundle, that, you know, all that, the, them, them gays. The, <laughs> me talking like they aren't my mutuals, bitch. Those are my mutuals. I, I accept them for who they are. But it's like those gays all started going, how dare you question sign? Y'all shouldn't even be mad that Psy scammed y'all. Y'all should be mad that black trans women had to go through this entire ordeal just to get money out of y'all. And I'm sitting here thinking, you just told the people that got scammed, emotionally manipulated, that they shouldn't be mad because Psy was owed their money? Because like I told you, people with fake GoFundMes go to prison. One of my followers went, girl, why are y'all trying to send a black trans woman to prison? I know y'all not out of your fucking mind. And I'm sitting here like, just because Sai is a black trans woman does not mean that they are above the law. A worldwide scam. Bitch, lock their ass up. I, I'm sorry. It's like, at this point, they need to be held accountable, especially because they didn't even fucking apologize. Like, it's just, they tried to run off with that bag and GoFundMe held that shit. GoFundMe said, no, bitch. They about to get their refund because this is fucked up. Y'all don't understand. Do you know how entitled you have to be to tell people that you've scammed? Y'all owed me that money because I am black and trans. Nobody owes you shit in this world. Like that's the thing that I want a lot of people to understand. Nobody owes you shit in this world except your parents and that's by law. That's by law. Nobody owes you shit. So to say I was owed that money, y'all should have been donated that money to me, that is a very entitled and uppity thing to say, bitch. Because the thing is, if people, like I said in my tweets, if you have excess money to donate to members of your community that desperately need it, you should definitely do it. Be a good person and definitely give back. But that is out of the kindness of somebody's heart. You are not owed money. Emotionally manipulating thousands of people, thinking that they're donating to somebody who is possibly dead or in danger, that's fucked up. Especially because we are in a pandemic where people are still without jobs and are losing their homes. Like, I understand you need your survival and surgery fund, but at the same time, bitch, you out of line. You you out of pocket. It's like you are so entitled that you felt, and that, that Psy felt, and that the gays defending Psy were going, oh, they were owed that money, and y'all should be asking why they need that money in the first place, and y'all, why weren't y'all donating? Y'all don't understand. You don't have to give your money to random people. 
That's the thing. It Sai was not providing a service. Sai was not giving back. Sai was being an active asshole on social media. Why the fuck would I donate my money to them? It's like y'all y'all are <laughs> I'm not understanding today's society where y'all just feel like I am old this, gimme, gimme, gimme. Because it's not like I'm that old. You know, I'm 24 and I'm still in the mindset of if I ain't giving you shit, why would you give me money? It's, it doesn't make sense. Like if it's out of the kindness of your heart, that's one thing. But it's not like Sai gave a service or it, it, it was just y'all not y'all not y'all not thinking straight. I, I swear, I swear it's the ketamine. I swear it's the ketamine, bitch, because it's not it's not adding up. It's something right in the buttermilk. The fact that I'm done. I'm done on that. It's just the gays, the New York artsy gays, you know, that do the party and this shit. They were the only ones defending them because even size friends who are actual trans women were saying, nah, you fucked up for that. I can't believe that you left me out to dry like this. Like, Sai used them, deleted all their social media, and left all of the big name friends that retweeted their information out to dry, to get dragged, to get roasted. And it's like, you really set up everybody close to you so you could steal a couple thousand dollars. Sai is a fucked up individual. Sai is a fucked up individual. And no, I'm not gonna be one of those people that's like, I hope they take the GoFundMe money to get the help that they need. No, bitch. I hope y'all get y'all refunds. I ain't donated to that shit. I did not because it's like when I start asking questions and there's no answers, what is, what the, the math ain't mathing. The math ain't mathing. So no, I hope y'all got y'all money back. I hope Sai is held accountable for their actions. Accountable for their actions. Cause that was some bullshit. Like, and then the people defending it. I was just, I was flabbergasted. Cause it was one of those scenarios where it's like, I know if I speak up, I'm gonna get dragged and labeled as transphobic. And then when it came out that I was lying, I'm like, I know if I speak up. No, I spoke up. <laughs> I spoke up. I remember I spoke up. I'm like, y'all out of your fucking minds. And obviously that tweet didn't take off, but the tweet going, y'all should be asking why they had to scam and blah, 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 blah. That got hundreds of likes. No. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Not for me. But yeah, that's Finding Sai. Um, basically, Sai no longer has social media because they're hiding their face because they stole all that money. They stole all that money. So yeah, that's the story. Um, definitely tell me your opinions on the scenario. Um, <laughs> tell me if you feel like that Sai was owed that money. You know, as a black trans woman, they do have to struggle more in society and the jobs are spare. So I understand that they need help especially our community should be looking out for them. But do you feel that Sai was owed that money even after emotionally manipulating thousands of people with a fake kidnap scenario? Especially since that truly does happen to trans people. Leave me your opinion, drop it down below. But yeah, <laughs> And once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I'll see you guys there. Thank you.